In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to show you how to place a title on the screen with a background and then draw a border around the background to highlight the title. And then when the title disappears from the screen, we're going to undraw the border and make the background disappear. I saw this in an advertisement and wondered how can we do this in PowerDirector. So please look at the following example and then we'll show you some steps to build this yourself. First thing I'm going to do is take my video, drop it on track number one. And the next thing I want to do is work on my audio. I'm going to put that on the audio track number five. Now there are two things I need to do. First of all, if I look at my audio, I see it starts out uh, silent. So I need to trim it. I'll right click on it and then I'll choose the edit audio and the trim option or I can use the keyboard command control alt T to trim it. When I get my trim screen open, I'm going to magnify so I can be as precise as possible. I'll move my playhead over to the beginning and then I'll click the mark in option at the bottom and then click on OK. Now this will actually shorten this in the timeline so I need to move it to the left to realign it with the video. The next thing I want to do is set some beat markers because I want the animation of the title text to fit the beat of the music. So I'm going to right click on it again and choose clip marker, add music beat marker. And it warns me because I already did some trimming, I'm okay, I'll just click on the okay button. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to do the beat detection. I prefer the manual option and to manually click a beat once you hit the play, you can click the button here or just press the A key on the keyboard I'll do that and you'll hear the music and we'll set the beats. Okay, we've got the beat set at the very top. I like it. We'll click on apply. Now we have our beat markers. I have to decide how the title is going to work with the beat. Let's say we take two major beats to get the title in, two beats to hold it on the screen, and then two beats to make it disappear. So I'm going to set some timeline markers. I click on the beat marker, and then in the very top, I right click and then we'll set a timeline marker. And I'll just call this end in motion. There, we'll click on OK. Then we'll go to the fourth one. And then I'll right click again, add timeline marker, and we'll start out motion. Click on OK. And then we'll have it all done by this marker. I'll right click and we'll have title ends. These are going to be helpful. So the next thing I want to do is bring my title in. So I'm going to take a title I've already designed and put that on track number three. So I go to my title room and then I want to go to a sub content of that of custom titles that I've done. Food for the world. Click on that and I'll drag that down and put it in track three. Now I want the duration of it to be where I had my last one title ends. So we'll extend the duration of it right to this. What we need to do is put a background on the title, but I'm not going to use the element in the title thing itself because I'm going to do some fading. And if I do that, I, I can't use the backdrop inside the title. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to take a gradient. I'll go to my media room and then we're going to expand the subcategories to get to my color boards. And we need to expand the area here so we can see them. I'm going to go to a gradient color. Let's take a simple two-tone blue here. And we'll take this one and drag this down in track number two. And so we'll make that also the duration of our title. So there we have this. So what I want to do is I want to change the size and shape, obviously, of the gradient background. So we'll click here and we're going to edit that. So I'm going to double click to get into the PIP designer and we'll temporarily dial the opacity back just a bit. 
and we're going to turn off maintain aspect ratio. So we want the background to be a little smaller. We want it big enough to be able to put something around the edge of it. Okay, so let's take this here, move it a little wider. Let's do it just like that. I'll turn the opacity back up. But what we want to do is fade it in and fade it out. We have our timeline markers here. I'm going to click on the first one, and this is where it will have faded in. So we're going to use an opacity value for the background, for the gradient. So I'll click the opacity value. We'll set an opacity keyframe right here where it's full in. We'll, we'll click to the third one, and we'll set an opacity value there. Now we'll go back to the start and set an opacity value by simply dialing it down to zero. And we'll go to the end, and we'll do the same thing. And so now the background should fade in in the first two beats, stay the same, and then fade out in the last two. Let's see if it's working so far. We'll play this segment. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we want to add another feature. We also want to add a sketch animation. That's where we draw something in that background area. So I'll put my playhead where I can see the text and I can also see the color board I've done. So now I'm going to go into my PIP objects room. I can press the F5 function key and I want to get into a subcategory of this called sketch animation. And in the sketch animation, I'm going to take the rectangle, the square soft rectangle, drag that down and put that in track number four. This will be the border on my color board behind my title. And we'll make the duration equal to what we have in the rest of the screen. So we're going to minimize this, go back to this screen for now, and go back to our media content and then minimize that. So let's look and see what we have here. Here we have our food for the world. And we want to animate this border around it and modify it in some degree. So first of all, we'll double click on it. And that will open up my sketch designer. Let's change the color to white. And we'll change the width down to quite a bit. Something like that. And now we're going to change the size and shape of it. We can move it down. We're going to make it inside the box. I need to shrink it and move it. And so we can adjust it accordingly. And so right now what will happen if we play this is it will simply draw in and we're going to also make it draw out. Let me click on OK for now. We start playing here. And you see it's, it's drawing in, but the timing's off. So we have to do a 324 for the in motion in our sketch animation. So we'll set this up, double click on it again. And we want 324 for our playback. You see a line moves here. And I believe we have the same for the ending effect. We'll turn on ending effect, we'll reverse it. We'll type 324 if the beats are approximately the same. And you notice this is where it's stable. So we have it coming in and coming out. Let's click on OK and let's see what happens. Now it goes out. I see what I did wrong. I did, I made this too long. Okay, so we'll drag it to here, and now we'll play it again and see if it works. Two beats to come in, two beats to come out. And let's add just a little bit more to make it a little bit unique here. We'll go to our title room. I'll go to my custom titles. And I have a FFW uh, for the website. We'll put that on the end. 
and then we'll shrink these down as much as we can and play. <laughs> So we were able to take the background and draw a board around it and reverse it in time with the music. So that's an interesting project. You might want to experiment with something like that yourself in CyberLink PowerDirector. Director.